And, um, but let me uh, start by showing you where uh, we are, where we work. The Institute of Biotechnology is uh, located in, uh, in Cuernavaca, Morelos. Uh, Cuernavaca is a city that is about 70 uh, kilometers uh, south of Mexico City. It has uh, like a 23 degrees uh, average all year long, so it's, this is very pleasant uh, with very, uh, not very, very uh, important deviations. It's very in place, a very nice place to, to live. Uh, and just because of the similarity, um, the Institute uh, was born as uh, the research center on genetic engineering and, bio and biotechnology. And that was in 1982. Uh, I, I understand that uh, uh, this international center was created in uh, one year later, right? In 83 well, or the, about the, the same? Initial, the initial agreement was signed in 83, but the laboratory started in 87. Okay. So we started activities in Mexico City with nine researchers, and then two years later we moved to Cuernavaca, and in 1991 it was transformed, transformed in the Institute of, uh, of Biotechnology. And just to, to give you an idea of uh, how this, um, this institute is uh, formed, the academic community is formed by a now 102 researchers, it grew very, very uh, uh, rapidly. Uh, where about half of the, of the uh, academic staff is in the, in the two highest uh, positions as associate uh, or full professors. We have close to uh, 90 technicians, uh, 43 postdoctorals, and the working labor really <laughs> in the institute is uh, <coughs> constituted by the students. We have like 330 students, two-thirds of them from a, 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 a graduate program that I will describe uh, very briefly in a, in a moment. Well, and this uh, academic community <coughs> forms 42 research groups or a consortia of groups that are uh, distributed in five departments that, as you will see here, is um, we work in, in many different uh, uh, subjects, uh, including plant molecular biology, developmental genetics, molecular physiology, cellular engineering, biocatalysis, molecular medicine, bioprocesses, and molecular microbiology. And as I said, we have two teaching programs, a grad program in biochemical sciences, and uh, where we graduate uh, <clears throat> so an average in the last five years around 50 uh, students, uh, two-thirds of them in, the, in master's and 18 PhD students. And also in, in uh, 2003, we started an undergrad program in, in genomic sciences in coordination with the Center for Genomic Sciences also in Cuernavaca and from the National University of Mexico. This is a very interesting uh, program because the, the students uh, acquire a very strong background in biology, mathematics, bioinformatics, and computer science. And it's, it's a career, it's a program that is highly demanded. Uh, this last year for uh, more than 200 applicants, uh, 24 were accepted. And these 200 applicants are already students that have been admitted to the National University. And uh, usually the uh, uh, admittance rate is about 10%. So from, uh, th that means that uh, from uh, 200, uh, I mean 2,500, 250 applicants, uh, students will be accepted to the university and still we have uh, another uh, log of uh, selection for this particular um, a program. And uh, so the, the, the academic formation of these students is, is um, been very convenient for those uh, of us that study biochemistry or cell biology and all the, the uh, skills that are actually needed now to do genomic sciences. Uh, you require some other formation. Um, so in particular, in, in our group, we uh, have been interested for many years, as uh, Oscar mentioned, in, in the study of uh, rotaviruses. In general, we're interested in the, study, uh, in the study of gastrointestinal viruses in basic, uh, in, in trying to understand the, the biology of, uh, of uh, these two viruses, rotavirus and astrovirus, 
Uh, that is also a virus associated to uh, diarrhea in, in, in children. And more recently, uh, we started uh, working on respiratory viruses, mainly in diagnostic and molecular epidemiology, and in particular in influenza, on molecular evolution and epidemiology of, of, uh, of influenza A virus. And um, we have uh, be, uh, become interested also in doing some biomethagenomics in different systems. Uh, uh, particularly in respiratory infections, in gastrointestinal infections. We have worked for some time in this area, and these are more projects that we have interest and in, uh, are about to, to start, uh, I hope, very soon. That is to study uh, viruses in, in sewage water from Mexico City. You know, it is like 20 million people living in Mexico City, and all the sewage comes out in only one single place. So it should be very quite interesting to 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 see what uh, we can uh, find in this <laughs> in this water, and also we're interested in in doing some study of virus diversity in in, in bats. Um, okay, and uh, today I will uh, talk more specifically about uh, uh, the cell entry process of rotaviruses. That is something that has uh, had uh, our attention for many years. Um, and let me begin by giving you just some very general background information that probably you already know. But I will just mention it quickly. Uh, these viruses belong to the Rubidi family. They are the most important single etiological agent of uh, in gastroenteritis in, in children under two years of age are responsible for about 600,000 deaths per year in the world. They are uh, icosahedric particles of about 75 nano nanometers in diameter. They have no lipids and have a capsid formed by three uh, layers of protein. And their genome is formed by 11 segments of double-stranded RNA. So this is the, the virus as it looks by cloud electron microscopy and uh, image processing analysis. Uh, you can see here the three protein layers uh, in green, uh, the layer formed by this protein called BP2 in, uh, in the intermediate layer formed by BP6. And on the surface of the virus, uh, the, the, uh, the outermost layer formed by BP7 in yellow, and then these spikes that project out of the, of the surface of the virus that are formed by uh, BP4. Um, the virus, uh, in order to be able to infect the cell, uh, these spikes have to be cleaved by trips in, into two subunits, BP8 and BP5. If this cleavage doesn't occur, the virus uh, attaches to the cell surface but is not able to enter the cell. Um, and the current knowledge, uh, based on the description of our group and several other groups in the last uh, eight, uh, ten years, uh, indicates that the cell entry of rotaviruses is a multi-step process. Uh, one of the rotavirus strains that has, has been uh, used very frequently for, uh, for uh, many of the studies uh, of uh, rotaviruses in cell culture is this uh, simian rotavirus, a rhesus rotavirus. And uh, it is known that this virus uh, interacts uh, first through the uh, BP8 subunit of, uh, of, uh, of BP4 with terminal sialic acids, probably on ganglocytes, like GM3, for instance. And that this first interaction uh, causes an, uh, a subtle change in its structure that allows the virus uh, to interact now through the BP5 domain of, of BP4 with integrin alpha, alpha 2, uh, beta 1. And after this second interaction, there are at least three other uh, interactions described. It's not clear the, the, the sequentiality the sequentiality or the order, or even the, um, the relevance of if these are all required or they, they could uh, be um, uh, just, uh, I mean, some of these interactions could could be uh, non-essential and, and replaced by, by the presence of only one of those. But uh, after these three interactions, the, the virus enters the, the cell. 
by a mechanism that is not known, but what is known is that during this process, the outer layer of the, pro of the virus is, is lost, and inside the cell, in the cytoplasm, the double layer particles, uh, which are uh, transcriptionally active, start uh, transcribing the 11 segments of double strand RNA to produce the messengers and then start the replication cycle of the virus. Uh, what is also known is that uh, the interaction of a, a resource of the virus with sialic acid is not an essential step for cell entry. So there are mutants like this uh, that is called NART3 because of uh, new aminidase resistant virus that uh, can bypass the interaction with sialic acid and uh, is able to interact directly with integrin alpha-2, beta-1, and then follow the same, the same pathway for entry. And in addition to this, there are some other viruses, like the bovine rotavirus UK, and probably um, many of the human viruses uh, uh, could behave like this, uh, where they interact with a molecule that has uh, internal sialic acids, that could be like ganglioside GM1, uh, and then they are independent of integrins, but still depend on this uh, uh, heat shock uh, cognate protein, uh, HAC70. And then the, the, the entry of the virus is still, and again, uh, not very well characterized. And that's one of the things that we have uh, tried to, to uh, focus in the last year to try to understand the mechanism of entry of these viruses. Uh, and to, to study this, um, well, we started testing if, they, uh, if these viruses uh, would use some of the known uh, pathways of uh, endocytosis as a mechanism for entry. Um, in addition to the classical clathrin-mediated uh, pathways of entry, now they have been described as several other uh, routes of endocytic uh, uh, processes that include uh, a caviolin-mediated uh, endocytosis that depends of uh, caviolin instead of clathrin and also on, on dynamine that is uh, a large uh, GTPase that is important to pinch off the vesicles that are being uh, endoc endocytosed. And um, there are other um, uh, processes that are independent of both clathrin and, ca and caviolin, and that uh, may depend on, fl uh, on flotilin, that is another coat protein, or independent on dynamine and any known uh, coat protein, in addition, of course, to micropyocytosis and phagocytosis. So in the case of rotavirus, we recently reported that a rotavirus UK the bovine rotavirus UK uh, is able to, de depends on clathrin and dynamine, and uh, those, uh, it enters cells by a, uh, the, the classical clathrin mediated uh, process, while uh, the resource rotavirus uh, enters through uh, a, what seems to be a, a novel um, endocytosis uh, uh, route of entry that is independent of clathrin and caviolin but dynamine dependent. And at this point, uh, one of the first things we wanted to know or to study was uh, which of the interactions, um, <clears throat> as I described, this uh, virus dependent on, on uh, terminal sialic acids, on integrin, and on uh, HEC70, while this virus uh, is independent of integrin, to see if uh, we could identify the interaction that is defining which of the endocytic pathways is, is uh, a, the interaction that, that defines the, the endocytic path, pathway used by these viruses. And for, for this, we use the, um, the we, we took, a, took advantage of the segmented nature of the rotavirus genome. Um, you, you can co-infect uh, two cells, the, let's say with bovine rotavirus UK and RRV, um, and then, uh, since the genome is segmented in that cell that has been co-infected with these two viruses, you can have a large collection of combinations uh, with genes derived from either of the parental strains. 
and then you can select those that are of interest for your work. In this case, for instance, uh, it will be the <coughs> bovine rotavirus UK, the genome, the, the genome background with only one gene derived from, from, uh, from RRB, BP7. So we use uh, this, um, this uh, strategy. Unfortunately, a, a colleague uh, in the field, uh, uh, Taka Hoshino from the National Institute of Health in the United States, had uh, prepared this large collection of reassortants uh, between uh, UK and RRB. Here you see that uh, the genes in, in, in yellow are derived from, uh, from RRB and in the genes in, in green derived from, from UK. So we got this large collection and uh, selected some of them that were interesting for our question. For instance, if we start with this uh, <clears throat> reassortant, this gene, this, this virus has only BP4 derived from UK well, all other genes, uh, BP2, 6, and 7, uh, talking about the structural proteins of, of, the, of the virus, are derived from uh, risk of the virus. Uh, this reassortant has only BP7 and the other three genes from RRB. This has BP6 from UK and others derived from, from RRB. And, and uh, we have uh, several uh, combinations that can be used to um, evaluate to try to define which of the uh, rotavirus proteins is associated um, with the, the type of uh, endocytosis that we, um, that we uh, observe for one or other virus. As um, you can see here, when we uh, do RNA interference of the um, classing heavy chain, uh, the infectivity of UK is uh, very much reduced, while the infectivity of RRB is not, is not affected. And then when we evaluated this set of reassortants, what can be seen is that all genes, and you can see those that have uh, the, the purple bars, are uh, those that are represented by the purple dots here, that all the, the reassortants that have BP4 from UK behave like UK, while the uh, viruses that have the BP4 derived from the recent rotavirus behave like the parental RB. That means that uh, BP4, the spike protein, is the one that is defining if the virus goes through uh, classic mediated endocytosis or the other type of uh, less Let's well characterize endocytosis uh, uh, process. Um, now, remember that I told you that uh, there are some mutants that are um, derived from this uh, research of the virus. You can see here the infectivity versus uh, the treatment of cells with increasing concentrations of the enzyme neuraminidase that remove the, the terminal sialic acids. So you can see that the, the RRB is, is very much sensitive to treatment with this enzyme, while this mutant is, is not affected at all. Okay? So we characterize, we sequence the genes of these, uh, uh, of these mutants uh, many years ago. You, you can see we are rescuing some uh, almost archaeological viruses uh, that we have in the freezer. That was done in 1993. I was telling you that the, the, the mutant that does not longer require sialic acid but inter, uh, interacts with alpha-2, beta-1 integrin has um, an arginine instead of a lysine. And then uh, revertins can be isolated where uh, we go back to the original, um, the original amino acid. And then, again, as I said, the question is, uh, well, how would these viruses behave instead, of, uh, I mean, in terms of the, of the route they use to, to enter cells? And as you can see here, this RRB virus that has only a single change uh, behaves actually 
like the bovine rotavirus. While the revertants, as we expected, or well, we have again as, uh, as the simian virus. So that means that uh, a single amino acid change, that it changes the specificity of the binding of receptor. Instead of buying sialic acid, uh, instead of buying terminal sialic acid and bind, binding integrin alpha 2 beta 1, it makes the virus to enter now through the clathrin mediating endocytosis. Um, now, um, but then what happened with, uh, after the viruses are uh, endocytosed, uh, what is the, 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 traf the vesicular traffic they, they follow? Um, is uh, is the same or is it different? And uh, so we, we studied uh, some of the molecules that are known to be important in, in regulating this traffic uh, um, along the, the um, uh, endocytic uh, pathway. And uh, most of the endocytic vesicles uh, fuse to early endosomes in using a uh, small GTPase called RAB5 and its effector uh, early endosome antigen 1. And from here, the early endosomes serve like a distribution center where some vesicles can go, um, uh, can be recycled to plasma membrane, it can be also, can, can uh, exchange of vesicles and, uh, between uh, early endosomes and uh, trans-Golgi network or uh, early endosomes can mature uh, to what uh, have been called multi-vesicular multi bodies because of these uh, vesicles that are internal to this uh, um, organelle, and then uh, mature to late endosomes, and late endosomes again can exchange vesicles with the trans-Golgi network. And eventually, they, they fuse uh, with uh, lysosomes to form endolysosomes. So this is a very tightly regulated uh, process with hundreds of proteins that are involved in, uh, in controlling this uh, system. More than 45 uh, small RAB GTPases and many uh, effectors that are associated with them. Um, One other interesting thing is um, this skirt complex. This skirt complex and the somal sorting complex required for transport is the one responsible, and here it is represented by these red uh, bars, is the one that is responsible for the formation of these intraluminal vesicles. And it's a system that uh, is very important for um, taking mono-ubiquitinated uh, uh, cargos on the plasma membrane and then take them to lysosomes for degradation. Although this skirt uh, complex has also been uh, found to be very important for cytokinesis and uh, also for the exit of some viruses like HIV. Because see, if, if you see here, the, the topology of uh, formation of these vesicles in going away from cytoplasm inside to this uh, space is the same topology uh, of viruses when they uh, bought from the plasma membrane. So the machinery, this machinery that is used for, to form the interluminal vesicles have been used also are used by uh, viruses when they bought in the plasma membrane. Um, so first, then, we um, evaluated if um, these uh, initial um, uh, regulators of fusion between endocytic vesicles, RAP5 and uh, EEA1, were important for uh, entry of rotavirus, uh, <coughs> cell entry of rotaviruses. And as you can see here, both uh, RRB and UK, they all require a uh, RAP5 and this uh, effector protein uh, to be to, to efficiently infect um, the cell. 
So that means that independently, if they go through a clustering mediated endocytosis or to this other uh, novel, let's say, uh, mechanism of endocytosis, they both converge to this uh, uh, early endosome. Okay? Um, then uh, <clears throat> we carried out uh, like uh, three, four years ago a genome-wide screening uh, using a, a library of small interferon RNAs that are directed to most uh, uh, genes of, um, of a human genome uh, to screen for uh, proteins that will be important for replication of the virus. And uh, during this screening, that I don't have to, the time to, to show you more results, but I just want to tell you that um, we found two of these uh, subunits of the skirt complex like uh, required for rotavirus infectivity. So then we tested if uh, indeed uh, this complex, we, we took this uh, skirt complex is formed by at least four different uh, subcomplexes and also by some accessory proteins and uh, uh, ATPase uh, that is um, important for once uh, the interluminal vesicle is formed to release all these molecules to start a new cycle. So all these that, that are in red cycles were um, silenced. And as you can see, uh, silencing uh, components of all four different subcomplexes uh, inhibited the efficient uh, entry or replication of, of the virus, both for RB and UK. And this was also confirmed using dominant negative mutants. Uh, here, the ones that we had uh, at hand, dominant negative mutants of TSG101 and BPS4. This is the, the, the ATPS, the, the one that uh, releases all the components. And TGS1 is one component of, uh, I don't remember, but uh, probably you see it here, one of these. Uh, of these uh, um, subcomplexes. So this is very interesting because, uh, as I said, it has been associated with the transport from the plasma membrane of monoubiquitinated uh, proteins to take them to degradation and lysosomes, cytokinesis, or uh, with the budding of enveloped viruses. But it has not been described, this system, as required for the entry of, is particularly of non-enveloped viruses, because recently uh, adenoviruses and vesicular stomatitis virus uh, were proposed to use this uh, system, to require the system to enter cells. But at least it will be the first non-enveloped uh, virus that requires this, uh, this uh, uh, complex. Now, then we tested DRAP7 that is a uh, RAB um, GTPS to see if uh, th th that is usually used, um, employed uh, or, or considered that if uh, the viruses are required or uh, the, the cargo is required for the, the activity of these RAB proteins, that means that uh, components uh, are uh, uh, reaching the late endosome. And we did that. And here we, st we, we looked at a difference. A uh, result of the virus was not affected, while UK was affected by RAP7. And uh, again, using a dominant negative mutant of uh, RAP7, uh, we could uh, confirm that uh, UK is affected, but not uh, uh, RRB. Now, as a way to confirm some of these observations, we set up a system to detect, directly detect the virus uh, that is added to the cell to see if uh, we could, we could uh, find an association of these viruses with the several different vesicular uh, compartments that we have described. 
So in this case, just to see if the, the, the system uh, was uh, specific, we absorbed virus, RB in this case, uh, in cells that have been not treated or treated with neuraminidase. As I show you, if you treat with neuraminidase, uh, the, the virus is no longer uh, able to interact with the, with the cell, as, as you can see here, and these are non-infected cells. Um, so it seems that we can uh, specifically detect the, the virus on the cell membrane. Now we colocalize um, now using antibodies to the result of the virus uh, with that polyclonal antibody directed to uh, the, the whole particle and also with monoclonal antibodies directed to these uh, RAP GTPases. And um, as you can see here, at 40 minutes after co-infection, I mean, viruses were, uh, were absorbed for one hour at four degrees and then left for different times at, uh, at 37 degrees. It is the, 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 the kinetics uh, that we made. But uh, you can see that at 40 minutes, there is a large, um, uh, well, this is the, the signal with the antirotavirus uh, antibody. This is the monoclonal antibody to RAF5, and this is the, the colocalization. There is a, a large colocalization that actually has a peak at 40 minutes, okay, and then uh, drops um, very uh, rapidly. While uh, RRB, if you remember, does not need RAF7, However, we were able to find some, to observe some colocalization at later times. Uh, and here there is only one example of, of this. Um, now, this system can also be used to try to uh, determine the time of uh, virus uncoating. If you remember, the virus uh, has to lose, uncoating is the, the uh, that's what uh, we call uncoating when the triple layer particle loses the, the outermost layer to yield double layer um, uh, viruses. Uh, and this can be um, distinguished if we use uh, antibodies that are directed to complete virions, to all structural proteins of the virions, uh, together with a monoclonal antibody uh, in particular this, in particular this antibody, monoclonal antibody 159, that only recognizes BP7, but when BP7 is uh, incorporated into the virion, when it has a structure that is uh, actually assembled as a trimer, when the trimer, the trimeric BP7 is uh, uh, in the virion, it can be recognized. If the protein dissociates from the virion, then it cannot be longer recognized by this uh, monoclonal. And uh, so what you can see here is the, the colocalization between the signal of the anti-TLPs antibody in monoclonal 159. And uh, you see this localization in about 60% of the, of the um, uh, red and... Uh, and um, a green signals uh, derived from each of these monoclonals up to 40 minutes. But then uh, there is a, a marked drop in the colocalization between 40 and 60 minutes, such that at 140 minutes, for instance, you see the, the, the red dots, but no green. So what this means uh, or suggests is that the virus is being uncoated uh, between 40 and 60 minutes after entry, okay? And this is also for the uh, result of the virus. Uh, we haven't, uh, uh, these are quite recent uh, data. We don't have the, the images for UK, but we would expect that the uncoating of, uh, of UK will occur at uh, later times. Now, <clears throat> one other proteins, a couple of proteins that we found in this uh, genome-wide uh, uh, RNA interference screening uh, that we found were involved in, in uh, rotavirus effectivity was uh, this uh, 
RAV9, this is also another uh, small GTPAs, that is involved in the transport of uh, vesicles from late endosomes to Transgolgi network. And also, we found that it was important the MANOS 6 uh, phosphate receptor. Uh, this receptor is known to interact with uh, several proteins that uh, are modified with manose phosphate and then uh, is one of the typical cargos that uh, is part of the vesicles that shuttle between late endosomes and transgolgi network. So this would suggest that a, a protein that is uh, a interacting, that is modified by manose phosphate is required to be moved to late endosomes for the virus to, to, to enter the cell. And uh, you can see here that when uh, we interfere the synthesis of RAV9, UK, but not RB as, as uh, we would expect it because RB actually didn't need RAV7. Uh, RB seemed to, to stay in this, uh, in this area. Uh, but UK requires both RAV9 and maltose 6 phosphate receptor. Uh, now, we, we have differences between RRV and uh, UK that can be also, again, addressed by using of the reassortments. And um, so we tested how this uh, reassortants would uh, behave. And as you can see, again, the uh, reassortants, here we tested uh, <clears throat> some of them, like this 9 and 20, these this two, uh, that have the BP4 gene of UK. They behave like UK, and those that have the BP4 gene of RB behave like RB. So again, BP4 seems to be associated to this requirement for RAP7, but the same happens with the requirement, requirement for RAP9 and with the requirement for the manose 6-phosphate receptor. So there is something that we don't understand yet, but um, these molecules are all uh, required for cell entry. And it's important that these are molecules that are important for the entry step. Because if we transfect directly double layer particles that, as I said, are transcriptionally active, we, we use uh, any cationic lipid to introduce uh, these DLPs, double layer particles, into the cytosol, then none of these uh, genes are required. So it seems that all of these are important for the entry uh, uh, of, of the virus. Now, we also have this NAR3 single mutant that, as uh, I show you, uh, uh, behaves like UK in terms of uh, using the clathrin mediated uh, endocytosis. And uh, it turns out that this mutant also requires RAP7, also requires RAP9, but do not require manose 6 phosphate. And these are very interesting uh, data, not, not easy to understand, <laughs> but uh, the, the phenotypes are, are very clear. Um, so it seems like uh, Research of the virus enters cells uh, at the level of early endosomes, while UK uh, enters cells from late endosomes, and that maybe there are other cellular factors that are being moved, that are required to be moved from Golgi to, to late endosomes to facilitate the the uh, movement, let's say, of the virus from the late endosomes to the cytosome. And the next question, of course, is how does rotaviruses reach the cytosol from the endosomal lumen? Well, these are, although it was already known by using uh, 
uh, several types of drugs that the vacular ATPS is important, was important for rotavirus uh, infection. Um, we selected in this genome-wide RNA, uh, RNA interference screening, we also found two subunits of these uh, ATPAs that if we uh, silence it, silence, silencing them, uh, uh, decrease the, the infectivity of, of the virus. And what is known of these um, uh, vacuolar ATPAs is that, is that, that it uh, lowers or increases the concentration of uh, uh, while it uh, hydrolyzes ATP, it uh, introduces a, a proton pump that uh, increases the concentration in of uh, protons inside inside the, the, this, this, the, the, these uh, vesicles, uh, decreasing the pH. And, uh, but one of the, the things that are interesting is that this is not the only ion that is modified during this process. And there are also a very um, drastic change in the concentrations of other ions. The, the flux of ions is, is differential, and uh, one of particular interest is uh, the concentration of calcium. That in the extracellular uh, milieu, uh, it is about one millimolar, and then it drops very fast to about five micromolar, and uh, this is apparently uh, carried out by, by mucio, uh, mucolipin um, uh, calcium channels that are activated by, by, by protons, by low pH, okay? So this um, decrement in the pH seems to activate this uh, calcium uh, pump such that the concentration of calcium is decreased. And uh, why is this important? because uh, it is known that viruses TLPs in vitro, if they are treated with uh, um, calcium chelators like EGTA, and uh, we drop the concentration to about one uh, micromolar to 100 nanomolar, depending on the virus strain, uh, this causes that the, the outer layer is dissociated from the virus. Uh, BP7 is, is a calcium binding protein, and, and uh, yeah, removal of calcium uh, destabilizes this, this uh, layer. Um, so it's probably, it's likely, that the decrease in dosomal calcium could uh, be the cause of the loss of the surface protein layer of rotavirus, as uh, was described uh, uh, or suggested uh, many years ago by by a group in Venezuela, in, in particular by uh, Fabian Michelangeli and uh, Maria Christine Ruiz. And uh, <clears throat> one other interesting observation uh, has come uh, recently uh, derived from the crystal structure of this region of, of BP5 that is called BP5CT for uh, creeps in, uh, chemotrypsin uh, a fragment that is, for this fragment that is generated by treatment with chemotrypsin. Uh, this has been crystallized and uh, this model has been uh, put forward where they suggest that um, the uh, protein, this is BP5, this is uh, the foot of the protein. This is the, the body of V5 and then VP8 that is on the tip of this uh, trimer. And that when, when the, they, they suggest that when the outer layer is uh, lost, VP8 is removed and then on the tip of the, um, of the BP5, there are some hydrophobic loops that interact with the membrane, the, the lysosome, the, I mean the, the endosomal membrane, and uh, this uh, um, uh, changes, let's say, in the composition of, uh, of the trimer makes a, a very dramatic uh, structural change 
uh, what they call a, a fallback structure, where these uh, lipid um, uh, loops uh, are now in, in being uh, oriented uh, 180 degrees uh, different. And so this, uh, they suggest that is the, <coughs> the, the reason and the mechanism is through which the virus is released into the cytosol. Although um, this certainly needs a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, a further characterization. But in, 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 in summary, I would say that the cellular proteins that we have found to be involved in the entry of uh, research of the virus are uh, listed here. I didn't talk about CDC. This is also a, a, a small GTPase uh, that regulates, uh, regulates some uh, sort of endocytosis in the ones that I have described. And in, in UK in rotavirus, in addition to these molecules, uh, this, uh, it requires the ones that are uh, in red. And of interest, uh, human rotaviruses, at least some of them, when we tested other uh, strains, um, all these that belong to different uh, genotypes that have different BP4 proteins, this, all of these are human strains and even real virus, they are all sensitive to not, I mean, they are, they all enter the cell by clotting mediating endocytosis and require up single seven, five, seven, nine. We haven't tested yet uh, manose uh, phosphate and require the BT, uh, bacular ATPase activity. So it seems that this virus that has been used as a model for learning how virus enter the cell is actually an exception that is <laughs> that behaves quite different from um, other strains that have been uh, tested. And uh, well, the, the future uh, research, uh, the questions we would like to ask uh, is what uh, to characterize the, the actual endocytic pathway used by IRB to enter cells to it identify uh, what is the, the interaction between BP4 and which receptor that actually is defining the entry pathway of the virus, to define if the skirt complex uh, and the formation of multivesicular bodies and the, the requirement for these two molecules um, are required directly for virus entry or they are required for maturation, maturation of endosomes. Because uh, if you inhibit some of the complexes, uh, endosomes do not mature and then the block could be at a different level. Uh, we would like to know if there are other cellular proteins involved, involved in rotavirus cell entry. In, um, why, uh, what's the difference between UK and uh, more specifically be between NAR3 that again has only one change in BP4 and that makes the virus to go deeper into the vesicular traffic uh, as compared to the wild type virus what is the difference that makes that uh, some of these strains enters uh, from late endosomes but others do it from, uh, from early endosomes? Um, it would be important to determine if, if the virus encodes within the endosomal lumen or after it reaches the cytosol. And at the end, what is the mechanism of the virus to exit the endosomal compartment um, to, to reach the, uh, the cytosol and start its replication uh, cycle. And uh, with that, I, I finish. Uh, just want to show you that the people that did the, actually did the work, uh, Daniela Silva, Marco Aurelio Diaz, and Michelle Gutierrez, who are three PhD students in, in, in the lab and contributed uh, more or less equally to this uh, work. Uh, Tomas Lopez, that is a research associate in the lab, uh, Susana Lopez, that as um, Oscar mentioned, uh, co-directs the group, the research group with, uh, with me. And uh, Yasutaka Hoshino, that uh, uh, provided the, the set of reassortants with us, uh, money from the National University, the National Council of Science and Technology of Mexico, and Howard Hughes Medical Institute. And, grazie mille. Thank you.